welcome back to the fishing doctor's adventures we're gonna have a fun little show today i didn't even get the camera set up because i thought i'll just get some lines in the water quick it's like a little bit of a historic or remake episode i'm back out where i used to come out when i was younger all the time you know 20 years ago and uh, this is hermitage lake park uh, pond right in the city you can hear the city noise behind me there's highways there's housing there's the river right over there tons of stuff but guess what they put about 3,000 you know rainbow trout and now some brown trout in this pond a year it has a ton of bait you know leeches shrimps beetles fish you know everything and the fish grow really fast so they winter kill every year so you might as well come out here catch your limit take it home with you and enjoy so I just got the jaw jacker set in came off my uh, spot that I always used to come drilled holes in shallower than I thought but uh, maybe it's because the weed growth hasn't died yet down yet and uh, you see I drilled my line of holes to find uh, the bottom pop this jigging jaw jacker in I walked back to the sleigh to grab the other jaw jacker to set there and this one went off boom and uh, look at that nice fat they stock the triploids in here so they get super fat it's probably about a 14 incher and uh, uh, I'll see how big they get, but uh, since they all die, I'm just gonna keep uh, my limit five and we'll catch and release the rest. See how we do today. Just caught in that little circle tackle tungsten jig, chartreuse. It's one of my favorite ones. This is a seven millimeter size. It's great for trout, has a little bigger hook gap and a bigger hook. Okay, we'll try that again. Look at that second bow I had it on the wrong jaw jacker I'm tying up some two hook rigs because in Alberta you're allowed multiple hooks I'm gonna put three hooks on one two hooks on the other but don't even need two or three hooks look at this <laughs> jaw jacker with the white circled uh, tackle tungsten seven millimeter jig tipped with a mealworm boom another beauty bow probably about 15 inches so when fishing in some uh, provinces outside of British Columbia you're allowed multiple hooks on a line, so I stacked uh, three hooks on this one. The tungsten jig, seven millimeter at the bottom, a blob, and then a little scud pattern I tied up. So I'm gonna try the top two flies without bait, and I'll put the bait on the um, bottom one and see if they'll take a fly rather than baited tungsten jig. A little bit of an experiment. Well, it looks like I might have just caught the tail end of the morning bite. Got two in shallow pretty quickly. I'm just on the edge of the weeds. I drilled the holes from really shallow till about uh, four to five feet deep just where that weed edge comes down. There's a ton of feed. When I drill a hole right in the weeds, minnows and scuds and snails come out of the water. So there's tons of food right on the edge. So they just cruise along that weed edge and pick off that feed. But right now, it's like later in the day, so I suspect they're going out just cruising in the middle. So I'm gonna pull one of the jaw jackers out and then I'm gonna, I'll drag the camera around and see if I can jig some up out in the deeper water here on a slender spoon with this um, tungsten jig hanging below the slender spoon. Oh, a nice big brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, on, the, on my... Uh, I, I don't know what he hit, the spoon or the tungsten jig. I'm on the phone with my dad and this brown just came storming in and crushed it. Beautiful fish. We'll keep that one towards our limit. Seems to be about the size they are getting to the, uh, in this lake this year. That's cool. Okay, now it's later in the day, so I moved out to the middle and that's usually where they cruise. So I'm gonna move that other jaw jacker out here into the mid water because I marked one a little bit earlier and that one just came in really fast and inhaled it. So he didn't wait or think at all. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So I'll pop the other jaw jacker out here and we'll keep on fishing. Got one. We got one. We got one. Oh, did it come off? He's still there. He's still there.
Browns on the jaw jacker, another brown trout. I think he took the tungsten jig. I heard the jaw jacker snap, looked behind me, and it was off. Sweetie, sweet. Okay, let's get it set back down. Crazy day out here on Herbitage. Look at that, four trout already. It's a great little overlooked, uh, underutilized lake. And uh, I can tell there weren't very many holes out here this year, but great action winter fishing they're hard to catch in the summer for some reason because there's tons of food and the water gets algae and they just don't seem to bite uh, in the fall when the lake clears up they start biting again you can actually catch them on fly rods before it freezes you'll see them cruising around the shoreline catch them on small lures like spoons and then once the ice hits that bite just goes great it's probably the greatest time of the year and they're nice eating size by then and they all die anyway so you might as well come out and catch your limit because uh yeah have fun catch a limit of these like 15 inch plus i've caught big ones even up to like 17 18 inches some years they stock a little bit bigger ones but usually this is the size you're getting uh, the 15 16 inches wow that was another quick two brown trout wasn't expecting that Hooked one while I was talking to my dad on the tungsten jig below a spoon. And then boom, right behind me, the jaw jacker, jigging jaw jacker went off. So let's keep fishing, this is fun. Two bows, two browns, hermitage pond, can't complain. So usually midday if that shallow water bite slows down, just come out more to the center of the lake, give it a try. I usually start, if I'm fishing 10, 30 feet of water, try five to six feet down. That way, the fish cruising higher and lower in the water column will see the presentation. They can come up from the bottom, come down from the top. I often see fish that I mark come down to my presentation and even some come up. So either or will work for you. No. Oh, the jaw jacker went off. I don't think there's anything there. Jaw jacker went off. See how deep I moved to the middle of the lake. Okay, so we just had one swim by me and one hit on the jaw jacker out deep. Let's see if I can get our last fish here out deep. Well, thanks for joining me out here for a little bit of a heritage classic out on Hermitage Lake. I haven't been here for quite a few years and the last video I made is probably pretty old. So hopefully that's a little, little bit of an update for you guys. And... Uh, there's still fish here and now they stock rainbow trout and brown trout. A little under 2,000 rainbow trout a year and a little over 1,000 brown trout a year. Both are, uh, I think, all female triploids, so they grow pretty fast. And that's what, with the productivity of this lake, they have a lot of different types of minnows and leeches, uh, all kinds of bugs, aquatic insects like shrimp, scuds, and they just gorge themselves on those things all year. While the fishing can be good first thing in the spring after they stock, most of the fish are small. Later in the fall, it picks up again, decent sized fish and you can come catch them here on fly fishing or the small lures. And then the winter is my favorite time to fish it because the fish are at their biggest point in the year. And first ice from when it first forms all the way up until just the very beginning of January before the oxygen levels start drop down, that's when the fishing is best. So get out here, give it a try. Uh, on average the lake is at deepest 10 to 12 feet deep so first thing in the morning be up on that edge five to six feet of water because they'll be cruising those edge eating the bait and everything that cruises in the weeds and then in the middle of the day you can move out to the center of the lake the 10 to 12 feet of water and uh, you'll catch them there as well in the evening push back up against that edge to catch those fish cruising along the edge you might think that this is a pretty big lake uh, for 3,000 fish, but there's plenty in here with that many swimming around for you to catch. So I never see too many people out here. It's not a real high pressured fishery. Uh, the fish only live about one year, so you shouldn't feel bad about taking fish if you do catch them. And I've eaten them out of here and they taste pretty good to me. So I hope you enjoy the little tips we had today and catching a few fish out here on the Heritage, uh, I mean Hermitage Park Pond. Uh, always a favorite of mine. Used to come out of here when I was in undergrad 
take the bus on the way home from university and stop by here, carry some fishing gear in my backpack and come out fishing for an evening. Now you can do the same, so enjoy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button if you do and share with a friend. As always, God bless and go catch a big one.